welcome back students in previous lectures we have been discussing on the phases in this video we are going to see the next most important point is clauses let us see till now we have only been discussing the structure of the parts of a sentence but not the structure of the whole sentence or the clause a clause is a unit of language which consists of an noun phrase and verb phrase that is if we put an noun phrase and a verb phrase together it result is a clause i will repeat till now we have only been discussing the structure of the parts of a sentence but not the structure of the whole sentence or the clause a clause is a unit of language which consists of an noun phrase and a verb phrase that is if we put an noun phrase and verb phrase together the result is a clause if the clause can stand on its own then it is also a sentence and in terms of our notations of ps rules we have that yes noun phrase and verb phrase it is combined together let us see example the train leaves in the afternoon since english sentences can also have an auxiliary verbs areas we revise the above rule in include them as well as noun phrase auxiliary plus rahim has lost his pen rahim is noun phrase has his auxiliary lost his pen it is a verb phrase these sentences clauses would look di grammatically as follows let us see structure noun phrase and verb phrase the train leaves the is determinant train is noun leaves is verb verb phrases and preposition phrase in is prepositional phrase again noun phrase the is determinant and noun is afternoon second example is rahim is noun has his auxiliary then verb phrase verb phrase is lost his verb then noun phrase determinant is his and noun is pen this is all about the clauses all clauses do not appear as independent sentences sometimes we find clauses embedded inside another clause like in the following examples john said that rahim has lost his pen you will notice that a clause which was an independent sentence above is now used as a part of larger sentences larger sentence appearing inside the larger clause which is constituted by the whole sentence you will also notice that the embedded clause is introduced by the word that john said that rahim has lost his pen we call this dependent clause introduced as complementizers complementizers in short com or just c other examples of complementizers include if whether who when because etc we will refer to embedded clauses like that rahim has lost his pen as an subject as verb and the rule that produces s yes, is as follows as yes, complementary s yes. that is a subject you will notice that the rule for a dependent and embedded clauses contains which was introduced earlier to use being a form np and auxiliary now we are talking about the clauses we already discussed on it let us continue in english the complementary or complementizers is an optional element so we can have the above sentence without it as well as john said rahim has lost his pen we need not to now understand how 
embedded clauses are introduced into larger sentences for this we need to know that clauses are of different types we can easily recognize three main types of noun clauses adjective relative clause and adverb clause i will repeat we can easily recognize three main types of as noun clauses adjective or relative clauses and adverb clauses you will recollect that when we were defining the different kinds of phrases we had said that a phrase is known by the name of its only obligatory element which is the head of the phrase thus noun phrases will always have an noun if not anything else verb phrase will always have a verb if not anything else however we cannot define different kinds of clauses by the same criteria as used for phrases even though they look similar in the name to them because all the clauses are made of of the same elements that is whether a clause is noun clause an adjective clause or an adverb clause it is made of of an noun phrase and verb phrases remember that is whether a clause is a noun clause an adjective clause or an adverb clause it is made of an np and vp that is noun phrase and verb phrase embedded clauses are classified on the basis of their functions a clauses that functions like a noun or noun phrases is a noun clause even the one that functions like an adjective and adjective phrases an adjective clause known better as relative clause and a clause that functions like an adverb or adverb phrases is an adverb clause when we say it functions as something we mean it can some instead of them or in the slots where it usually come let us try to understand with this with the help of some example here john asked a question john asked if mary was coming to the cinema john disturbed the teacher the tall boy disturbed the teacher that john was going to delhi disturb the teacher among the sentences b and e contain a clause if mary was coming to the cinema and that john was going to delhi respectively these complementary structures are noun clauses as they appear in the same places that noun phrases or nouns do as can be seen by comparing these sentences which have clauses with their other counterparts where instead of the clause in a we have a noun phrase she we have a noun phrase and in d we have a noun phrase only b and e john asked a question that john was going to delhi disturb the teacher this is all about the clauses let me give you an easy clue here to help you find out the different types of clauses you will do good to remember the nouns nouns phrases and noun clauses usually answer the questions who or what i will repeat you will do a good to remember that nouns noun phrases and noun clauses usually answer the question who or what adjectives adjective phrases and adjective relative clauses answer the questions which i will repeat adjectives adjective phrases and adjective relative clauses answer the questions which and adverb adverb phrases and adverb clauses answer questions like why when where how why when where how etc in the sentences above a and e if we ask if he, we had asked what did john ask we would get the answer as a, a questions or if mary was coming to the cinema similarly if we had asked who worried the teacher we would have got the answer john or she the tall boy and if we had asked what worried the teacher we would have got the clause that the john was going to delhi has the answer
now look at the following sentences and judge whether the underlying expression in the same are adjectival or relative or adverb phrases phrases or clauses let us see the tall boy came late to the class the tall boy came to the the tall boy came late to the class second the boy who is from a very wealthy family never comes to class that boy who is from a very wealthy family never comes to class i will see you i will see you at work tomorrow i will see you work i will see you work when i am free i will see your work because you are a genius we hope by asking the right questions you have just correctly what the underlying expressions are f adjective phrase that is the tall boy tall it is an adjective phrase g that is b 